Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 67 of the Ruby Moss Cottage YouTube channel. In this show, I'm coming to you from Milwaukee and I'm sharing what is in my bags, what is out of my bags, and what is in my book bags, and a little bit of our lifestyle. So grab a cuppa, settle in, and let's spend the next few minutes together talking all things crafty. Welcome everybody. This is episode 67 of the Ruby Moss Cottage YouTube channel. My name is Joyce and this is a podcast that I do every two weeks if the stars are lined just right. And I talk about all of my makings, my crafty little endeavors that I uh, venture into. This podcast started, I'm not even sure how long ago, maybe five or six years ago when I lived in the Piedmont and um, I had a little cottage and I had named it after my grandmother, which was Ruby and the moss we had, the, the streets, the street name was hanging moss. So, and we have moss all over our gardens and I just loved it. So I just combined my two loves, Ruby Moss and our cottage and named it the Ruby Moss Cottage YouTube channel. Since then, life has taken lots of twists and turns. We sold the original Ruby Moss Cottage. We bought a yurt on the side of the mountain, about 3,000 plus feet high up. And um, so that became Ruby Moss Cottage. Now, as life would have it, we are living in a loft in Milwaukee. So yes, we still have our yurt and that will be our forever home. We are just here um, short term, meaning six months to two years. We're not sure yet. Whenever the contract is up, we will move back to the yurt. So right now, I'm at the loft, which I call my croft loft. And I am recording about all of my makes that I have done recently. So welcome. That is a bit of the history. If you're new, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for your support. And I've got viewers that have followed me since day one. If you are one of those, drop a note down below in the comments. I would love to know how many of the originals I still have. I know I talk with so many of you that tell me I have been with you since day one. And that just always warms my heart to know that we've been friends, knitting friends for so long. I remember when I first started, I didn't know a thing about um, it's storming. I hope that doesn't affect the sound. It just started once I got all set up and I thought I have got to go with it if this is going to get up tomorrow. So if you'll bear with me, and we'll just try to work around the storm, the lightning and the thunder. I've got a bay window, a, a, like a big bank of windows here. So I'm sitting in front of it. I, um, this is the living area of the, of the croft, of the loft. And this is my husband's chair that he sits in. It's typically faced this way, looking at the TV. And then this is where I sit, but I had to turn it so that I'd have the lighting for the windows. But anyway, the storm. What was I saying? Um, I was saying something about the, the ones that 
have been with me from the beginning. Thank you. That's always, oh, I know what I was saying. So in the beginning, I knew nothing about, I, I didn't know anything about anything. And um, so my daughter was, she said, you know what, if this is something you want to do, you just need to do it. But first of all, why do you want to do it? Because if you don't have a reason, then you won't, it won't last. And, you know, those were such wise words from the younger because I, um, if I had had any other reason other than just making knitting friends, I would have quit so many times. I have, there's been highs and there's been lows of this journey. And I'm so glad that the grounding force to this podcast is all about knitting friends. It's just about friendship because if it was about growing a large podcast or if it was about getting free things or if it was about exposure and name recognition, I would have given up a long time ago. But as as more recently, I was talking to one of my knitting friends who I met through this uh, podcast. Actually, we met at a retreat, but it was because of this podcast that I got invited to the retreat. And I was asking her, she used to be a, she used to record podcasts. And I said, do you regret quitting? And she, for her, uh, she said sometimes yes, but she felt it was the right choice for her. And I, you know, and I, I said again, you know, sometimes I struggle with it, but then, you know, I met so many good friends and she said, you need to always remember the people that you talk to, remember the ones out there that are sick. And she had no idea how many of you have reached out to me who are sick, who are in bed, who are fighting terminal illness, or a loved one is fighting terminal illness. And you've reached out to me and said, just laughing with me or just making with me has just made your time a little better. And when she said that, I was just like, you're right. That's why we do this. It's the friendships that I've made and I've made so many. So if you're new, I hope that you'll be one of them. If you are new, please drop a line below and just a little note in the comment section below and let me know, introduce yourself um, so we can get to know each other. It's a wonderful community here. This community kind of overflows into my Instagram community. So if you're new here, if you're old here and I know you've probably, if you're, if you're returning, you've heard me say I'm also on Instagram as the Ruby Moss Cottage, um, as Ruby Moss Cottage. And um, so, yes, feel free to follow me there. I have not been as active in the last year on there, but I'm going to try my best to do better because I know it's fun to see what each other is making. And um, I'm going to try to do better about that. While we're in the introduction, I want to let you know that I do have a Buy Me A Coffee page. So if you like this uh, podcast, this uh, video, and you uh, want to support me some way, you can always, the link will be below in the show notes. You can always just buy me a coffee. That is greatly appreciated. A huge thank you to everyone who has supported me through that. That has just been my biggest encouragement at times just to say, hey, we're out here and yeah, we, we, we like what you're doing. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who has supported me through that. I have often thought and really particularly I thought I need to change the name because Ruby Moss Cottage really doesn't represent my lifestyle any longer. But... It is my basis, it is my foundation, and I've discovered that you can't change your name. I would have to start a new podcast. And there is no way I'm gonna start over from the ground with that. That I, I, I've just had, I put too much work in to grow the channel to the size that it is. It's not large by any means, but it's been a lot of work just to get it to this, this point. So I don't think I will be doing that. If there is a way that I could change the name and still keep the same YouTube channel, then I would do that, but I haven't found a way to do that just yet. So let's start in about what, let's, you know what, let's start about what I'm wearing. Let's get that out of the way, okay? I am wearing the Nurtured Sweater. It is by Andrea Mowry, and I knit it in shepherd's wool, which is milled here in the US. I love the sweater. It was a bit tricky um, at times with the with the uh, pattern and the decreases on the sleeve, but I worked it out. 
Um, let me stand up so you can see. I, I think there's enough room here. Let me do it this way. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to mess my camera up so that I won't be able to see it. Anyway, this is the, the sweater. Let me show you the back of it. I've got it on over my overalls today. But as you can see, the, the wool peels very badly. And I do not have my uh, gleaner here, but I did use my Lily brush on it this morning and um, got some of it off. But I love the sweater. I wear it a lot. I throw it on over dresses. It's cropped, so it's always on over a dress or overalls. But I loved it. I did, I am really bad about doing Ravelry show notes, so I do not have a Ravelry page on this. However, I did try to look up most of the information on it. Um, I, I just know this, Andrew Mowry, Shepherd's Wool, milled, it's milled in the U.S., and um, I don't know what needle size I used, whatever size I got gauge on, but I love it, love it, love it. It is one of my tried and true throw and goes that I wear quite often. Also, I have made this headband, okay, my hair. I apologize in advance for my hair. There were two things this year that I was going to start working on. Number one was my hair and I've told you in recent episodes that this is the year that I've decided to go gray. And so you can see my hairdresser is helping me as I grow that out. I love it so far. But this mop that's here today. Okay, I just got back from Charlotte. And, well, not just a week ago. I had been there for three weeks. I, um, we don't like to check bags when we, uh, travel. We're always in too much of a grab it and go mode. When, when we land, we don't want to wait for the bags to, to come and be taken off the plane. So we really just try to travel with carry-ons. So I had my bags so cram packed this trip because I was in Charlotte for three weeks. I had gone to the yurt, so I had grabbed yarn um, and other things from there that I needed. And so, I mean, I had packed so much and I had to actually leave stuff at my mom's. I just could not get it in the suitcase. So I got everything packed and I realized my straightening, straightening iron was not in my luggage. And so I was like, Todd said, well, put it in my backpack. I think I can get it down in there. Well, we did. I got the, I got the straightening iron in his backpack and it's still in his backpack, which is at work. So, the last couple times I've washed my hair, I have not been able to straighten it and it's just been a curly, crazy kind of mess. <laughs> so that's why it's looking this way today. Although I will say this, in the process of simplifying my hair for this year, I may be going more and more like this because it's so much easier just to let it dry naturally and just go. I think too, my hair used to be curlier than this. And so it's really, I don't know if it's menopause. I don't know if it's the gray. I don't know what, but it's not as curly as it used to be. But that's why my hair looks the way it does today because the straightening iron that I typically use is in the backpack at my husband's work. But in my hair is this, it's called the uh, pin, pin it up. Pin me up, let's see, I made a note of it. It's called Pin Me Up Headband, and it is by, you know what, we're gonna transition right into what's out of my bags. The Pin Me Up Headband is a free pattern, that's always good news, and it is by, who, what, who is it by? Mm, I know I made a note, I made a note because I've started a long time ago, my sister, not a long time ago, um, she wrote in it, let's see the date, 2019 for my birthday, My the middle sister gave me this journal for um, my birthday because I journal, I've, oh, I've journaled my whole adult, adult life. But when she gave me this one, I set it in a pile of notebooks and plain empty notebooks 
because my journal that I was using wasn't filled up. So I thought, well, I'll use this when I finish. Well, then I, to turn, I decided to turn this into my crafting journal. And I started in 2022 making it my crafting journal. Okay, so in 2022, I went along like you do, all gung-ho, and I had taken notes on all my projects, and then I quit. So I just started back up. I thought, okay, I need to get that started again. So I did start this. The Pin Me Up is a free pattern on Ravelry by Knit Etude. And it's worsted weight. I did whatever size needle she said, but this is the headband that I knit. It is so quick, so fast. I knit it in an afternoon and I plan to knit. I actually went to Michael's the other day and got um, a burgundy color, reddish burgundy color. And um, I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna make them in all kinds of colors because I absolutely love this headband. It's just so comfortable and it just ties my hair up so well. So this is part of what I'm wearing and it's also out of my bags. So while we're talking about out of my bags, let's talk about one more thing that is out of my bags. It is this. The little leftover shawl, and not shawl, cowl. And you'll remember, I was working on this, I think, for the last two podcasts, actually. It is the little leftover cowl by uh, Kelly Bean Knits, Stephanie Lotvin, I think, is that her name? Yeah, Stephanie Lot Lotvin of Kelly Bean Knits. This is the pattern. So this is, I love a cowl because it, it, it stays in place. Let me see if I can get this on my head. But look how easy it is. I actually wore this this weekend. I'm going to kind of tilt this down so you can see it. I love this cowl. So I can put my coat on. I'm not, and I love shawls. I love shawls too. But, um, this you're not fighting with keeping it in place. These were all minis except for this. This was uh, one of a homespun house's yarns and I do not remember the colorway, but it was the grounding color. So I, I used it, the large, the large ones. And then, um, yeah, I just had all these minis that I just pulled from my bundles and I actually wore this this weekend and it was so nice and warm. We went from 80s, which I knew was um, unseasonably warm. Many people had told me this is unseasonably warm, you know. Um, and then it went back down to snowing. Monday we had snow. Didn't, it didn't amount to anything. It didn't even, uh, the ground had been so warm that it didn't even stick to the ground. But um, yeah, and it's cold. Yesterday I walked, I started out with my gloves on. I took them off, but I did have a hat and a coat on. Um, and I don't know what it is out there today. I, it's raining, so I don't know. I'm hoping it stops so I can get my walk in. But this is, I, I mean, I love it. I love the colors. I love everything about it. So I will definitely use that a lot. So that's out of my bags. That and the headband is the only thing that I have finished. Now, I know that's not much for two weeks. I don't know how these people turn projects out the way they do. They're just like boom, 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 boom. So fast. But to my defense, I was in Charlotte and I was there for three weeks. And you'll remember, we're just gonna transition to what's in my bags. You will remember I have been working on the wool and honey sweater, which is in this, um, my Atenti bag, my llama Atenti bag. Um, I'm working on the wool and honey. It is another one of Andrea Mowry's uh, sweaters. And I think I told you in the last podcast that I had to, I had one whole sleeve worked, or pretty much one whole sleeve, and I had to rip it out because it was too tight. And I did not have... What I was gonna do is I was gonna rip it out, go up a needle size, and then re-knit it. But I did not have that other needle size with me. So I couldn't knit on this. But since then, 
I have knit and I have the sleeve, one sleeve done and one other one not done, but I was actually about this far and then I saw a mistake here. I had purled, a, I, maybe not that far. I had purled a row when I should have knit it, purled around when I should have knit it. No one would have known, but I was afraid. I thought, well, you know what, we're only, I had only knit about that, say, say if it was here, I'd only knit about this far. And it was up this far on the sleeve. And I thought, I would hate to knit this whole sleeve. And then every time I looked at the sleeve, I saw that one row. Whether anybody else did or not, I would see it. So I thought, not worth it to me. So I frogged it back and I, I, cast, I started knitting it again. So a few little hiccups, but it's going to get done soon, hopefully. The next time, I don't know what you can see there, but hopefully the next time I record, this will be finished. I don't know if I'll be wearing it because it may be too warm, but I don't care. I will have it for when the weather gets cooler. I love this pattern. I probably would knit this pattern again. Of course, not doing all of this, I would just, but I would just do it stockinette. I wouldn't do the the reverse stockinette or whatever this is called. Um, I would just do it in stockinette. I just love the shape of it. It just it, and I love the, so I love the construction, and I kind of figured out the needle size. Like I did this all in a two point five. I know this is fingering weight. It's loft. By Brooklyn Tweed and it's the Cinnabar colorway. So I knit it in a 2.5 which in and of itself explains why. That's U.S. size. What would that be in? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that would be millimeters. I might have wrote it down. A three. No, 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 no. I did a, th I'm, I'm using a three on the sleeves. So these are U.S. needle sizes, size three on the sleeves. I did this in a 2.5 and the ribbing in a 1.5. Um, oh, I did change the sleeves. I did not. Um, she has it, which I loved it on her and I thought I was really going to like it, but she had it like you knit. It's it's this stock, reverse stockinette to here and then she has a, a long ribbing on the sleeve. I did not like that. For me. So I just did the balloon sleeve. I just took it down and then I decreased right before I started the ribbing. So I am very thrilled with it. One of the things I like is she has the beginning of the row start in the back. And I don't know if you can see, but it just looks like a crisp seam going down the back. Can you see that? I love that. That is one of the things I like. I really like about this sweater. But it's a great fit. It's, it's squishy. Oh, it's so squishy. And it's very, very comfortable. So, The Wool and Honey by Andrea Mowry. And hopefully it will be worn soon. Remember, I am making a skirt to go with this. I was so intimidated by that skirt. And someone, I cannot remember your name. And I am so sorry. But you commented. You said, um, as creative as you are or as... Crofty as you are, you'll have no problem with this skirt or I don't know what you said, but it really encouraged me. So I thought I can do this. So I got it all cut out and I've got it to the same place it was the last podcast that I talked about it. I have not touched it since I've been back. I'm back to that intimidation point. So I need to get that going because I can wear that all summer long, but I intend to wear this with it in the winter with some navy tights. But, so this is still in my bags. All right, I do have something new in my bags that you have not seen. And I'm having so much fun with it. Oops. It is in my Hohi Locatelli. I don't know what, what this bag is called, um, but I love it. It's great leather, great, great quality. I am knitting the Jacobus Monkey, and it is by Anita, let me see, Anita Will 
Wilshot. I've never heard of her. For all of my grandbabies, when they were born, I knit them uh, an animal. Like the girlies got bunnies and the two boys got dinosaurs. And poor Cole was born. He will be two in June and he has still not gotten his stuffed animal yet. So I didn't want to do a dinosaur. I didn't want to do the ones that I had been doing. So I decided I would do a monkey. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a monkey for him. I'm going to have these ready for when I go back in June. I'm going to have a monkey for Cole. And then I have our sixth grandbaby is coming in June. And I'm going to have one for him as well for, for when he is born. So poor Cole, he's the only one who hasn't gotten one. All right, but I have a question for you guys. And please leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I'm going to ask you before I ask my daughter and see what you think. I am knitting this with the Indulgence 6-ply, and it's a, uh, a DK. I loved it. I saw it knit up in some socks at a yarn store here, and I can't remember the name of the yarn shop. But So I bought this here, and so this is how it knit up. And you can tell me. Now, you're just going to have to, it's, it's not stuffed. All of the stuffing is at the yurt, and the um, safety eyes are at the yurt. So I'm going to the yurt before I go to Charlotte, and I'm going to get all that stuff. But this is the beginning, or how much I've got done, of the monkey. Tell me, do you think that is too girly? He's going to be adorable when he gets stuffed. That's the... the she called it the muzzle. So I, that'll all get stuffed. I'll have two eyes there. There'll be an ear here and an ear here. And at the tail, I have to take this out and knit the tail. And he's, you can see he's going to be va very fat. Um, but I, my question is, is this too girly? I think not. But... There is a little bit of pink there. I don't think that will, I know that that would not bother the father of the new baby being born. He wears pink. I know that he won't, that he won't think, and I, I don't think that they would think it's too girly. But for Cole, the, the two-year-old, I don't know. I don't know what they would think. So you tell me, is this too girly for a little boy? If you say yes, I do have a little girl I could give this to. Um, but I don't know. I personally don't think so. But I might be saying that just because I want this to be his. <laughs> so, but if that is not the cutest little monkey, I think it's going to be adorable. So this is, I'm using, this is the main color. And then I had some of this Stylecraft special that I'm using for the face and the arms and the feet. So let me know if you think this is too girly. Girly or, or either. So I have another one of those to make. And that is all that is in my bags, that's all that's out of my bags. But we can talk about what's in my book bags. And every time I say book bag, I can just see my sister going, <laughs> oh. All right, I finished the book, Camp Zero. Now there are a few of us that are, we haven't discussed it yet because everyone's not finished with it. If you were reading along with me, and you have not gotten a message on Instagram, please let me know so that I can add you to that thread. We have not um, started discussing it yet, so you've missed nothing. I've just set up the group, and we're gonna try to do a video chat soon. I did finish it. Not one of my favorites is all I'm gonna say. I mean, it's, it's really, really unique. So, I don't want to say too much about it because of the book club. But this was one of the books that Jenna uh, Bush Hager, Read with Jenna, had. This was the April book, and I've got something in my eye. 
Um, and so I didn't pick it. I would have never picked it. I know I wouldn't have, but I'm glad I read it. I think a lot of people are reading it. I think people are having trouble getting it. A couple of the members of the book club haven't got even gotten it yet because they're waiting for it at the library. So that explains to you, if you want to read along with us, you still have time to get it and join in and let me know so I can add you to our thread on Instagram. And then you can join in with the live chat whenever we get ready to do that. But that is out of my book bags. Then I just started this one yesterday. Kristen handed the four wins and I'm loving it. My daughter just now finished it. And she said when she got finished, she threw the book across the room. I don't know. I don't know what that means. She said that she thought it was depressing and heavy and she didn't read books to be depressed and heavy. So um, I'm really, I'm only on chapter four, I think. But I'm, yeah, I'm only on chapter four, but I'm loving it so far. Now, I, I mean, I can see the direction it's taking. And so maybe I will throw the book across the room when I'm finished. But that is in my book bags too. Kristen Hanna has a tendency to write books that, that make you cry, I think. Like The Nightingale, my favorite genre, I've never read it because people say they weep when they read it. I don't know. Maybe I'll read it someday. And then I got this. This was waiting for me when I got back from Charlotte. And this afternoon, I plan to sit down, refill my cuppa, and read the Lina magazine. This is the winter. Uh, let me see. I want to make sure I say this right. Winter 2023 is what it is. But, oh, my goodness. You know their books are so... I really... I rarely, rarely buy line of magazines because they're so expensive. But I treated myself this time and I just, it's such a beautiful, beautiful magazine. So I'm going to be doing this this afternoon. I don't even think I'm going to knit. I think I'm just going to sip tea and read and dream and just enjoy this copy. I just, that's, it's going to be a nice, quiet afternoon. If it stops raining, I'll go for a walk. But other than that, I'm not doing anything because tonight is Survivor Night, which my husband and I are huge fans. And we always order pizza for Survivor Night. And we are going to have pizza, so I don't have to worry about dinner. And we're going to watch Survivor. And so I don't have anything I have to do this afternoon. Maybe a little laundry, but easy peasy. All right, I think that's everything. Let me check my notes to make sure that I've not left anything out. Um, I've told you what I'm wearing. I've told you what's out of my bags. I've told you what's in my bags. I've told you what is in my book bags. Also on my book bags, um, Audible. In Audible, I'm, I'm listening to The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. So I mean, I, I listen to that when I'm walking and I enjoy, I'm really enjoying that one. Okay. Well, we don't have a lot going on. We are back at the loft. I'm here until June. Um, it's Major League Baseball season though. And I think we're going this weekend. We have a bucket list. And on our bucket list is to try to hit all the Major League Baseball parks. And I don't know how many we've hit. We've hit quite a few, but we've decided that since we're in Milwaukee, there are a lot of baseball fields, baseball parks within the area within, I mean, two to three hour drive. And so we're going to try our best to hit all of those while we're here uh, because we may not be back up through here. And, and that would just, we're here. We may as well just Try and hit them while we're up here. So I think this weekend we're going to go see the Brewers here. And that's really, really close to where we are. Um, so I think we're going to do that Saturday night. I can't wait. I'm not a knitter, though. I don't take my knitting to the baseball field. I, I know so many. Um, I know, I've seen where the local yarn shops, they go to the ballpark and knit. Like, I don't know what they call that. But anyway. They do it all over the place. I've never taken my knitting to the ballpark because I am so into the game. I mean, like we are both into it and I enjoy watching all nine innings. I never, I'm never bored. I'm never, I think we've left 
won Braves game in Atlanta one time because it was storming so bad. I, not storming, but it was raining so hard. And it, this was at the new field. Um, and so we were staying right there so we could go to the room and look out over the field and watch it. So we decided, why not? So that's what, I think that's the only game we've ever left early. I mean, we stick it out no matter what no matter what the weather, no matter how, I mean, we've been to where it's freezing. We've been to where we're melting. We've been to where we're soaking wet, but we never leave early. Never just that one time we did. And I think we were there for a two game weekend. And so we'd already been to one and it was like, this is okay. If we go, if we leave early and we didn't realize we were, I guess we did realize we could watch it from our room. But anyway, so, and they were losing. It was like, okay, they're not going to win. We're going to sit here and we're just going to get drenched. So, I don't even know who the Brewers are playing this weekend. I want to say the Red Sox, but I, I think I might be wrong about that. It's not the Braves. I'm a huge Braves fan. I like the Pirates because I grew up, at the, the Pittsburgh Pirates were our team. And then... I, I love Freddie Freeman, so I am a Freddie Freeman fan forever. So no matter where he plays, I'm a fan, and so I also love the Dodgers. I hope he goes back to the Braves someday, and I bet he will. I'm laying odds on that. But yeah, that's that's all we're going to be doing. Um, like I say, I just got back from Charlotte. I went there to celebrate our our three year. It, he was three year old then turned four-year-old for his birthday, and then um, snuck off to the yurt for a few days and came back. And so, but um, the main goal was to go, oh, and Easter. We spent Easter there with everybody. So I'll, I'll be here until we go back for another birthday and then the birth of uh, our sixth grandbaby. So I'll be here until then, but I have no big plans. Just a lot of knitting. I get a lot of knitting time in because the loft is not that big and there's only two of us and we don't get it that dirty. So I do my daily chores and then I get to sit and knit and walk. And I went over to the park one day this week. I put a picture in on my Instagram stories. I don't know what the flowers were. I'll try to pop a picture in here. I don't know what bluebells look like, but these blue flowers were all over the park. They were just gorgeous. And I went over there to read, and it was a beautiful, warm day. Um, just had the best time. And because okay, so there was a girl there laying out, and her boyfriend or husband, I don't know, partner, was there with her. And he had this, I think it was a bearded iguana. It was bearded something. So I, I'm really not into lizards or anything like that. So I don't know. You may know. But I was so drawn. I'm like, what is that? So they were telling me, and he said, you can pet it if you want. So I pet it. Oh. But um, it was their house pet, and they just let it go around because it's house trained. It was the cutest thing. So everyone seems to be a lot friendlier here that the sun is out. I think I've told you before, they're not real talkative, like when I'm out walking. I'm, I'm used to the South where everybody says, hey, and up here, they don't really, they don't even look at you to say hey. But, um, oh, I guess they don't say hey, they say hello. I don't know what they say. I know one lady laughed after I said, I said, hey, I was determined that the next person I passed was going to speak to me. And I said, hey, and she said, hello, and then just giggled. And I couldn't figure out why she giggled because I was being nice. And later I thought, well, maybe it's because I said, hey. So I try to say hello now when I speak to people. Every now and then a hey slips out, though. You know, that's deep. That's ingrained deeply in me. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for spending your precious time with me. If you would like, you could subscribe. I would love to have you as a subscriber. Give me a thumbs up. Um, feel free to buy me a coffee. And thank you so much for all your kind, kind words. Drop a comment below. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you're working on. Uh, let me know if, you were, if you're here often and if you enjoy it, if you enjoy stopping by. And yeah, we'll see you again in two weeks. We'll be right back here to hang out and talk all things crop. Until then, have a great spring and take it one stitch at a time.